On this Burnout Extra, we're gonna show you the difference between rear wheel drive, front wheel drive, all wheel drive, and four wheel drive. And we've got some badass cars and some lame ass cars to demonstrate. The cars we're demonstrating with are a 2008 Explorer, a 2015 Challenger, and a 2011 Transit. And we're going to show you first the difference between rear wheel on the Challenger and front wheel on the Transit. So the rear wheel here, ultimately the only thing that drives the car is the back tires. All of the power of the engine, the torque and everything is going to the back tires and back tires only. And in this case, the front tires are mainly just used to steer the car. So the way the rear wheel drive works is that there will be an engine and the engine will have the transmission connected to the back of it. Then connected outside of the transmission will be the drive shaft and the drive shaft will lead to the rear axle at the back of the car. And so the engine drives the transmission, the transmission drives the drive shaft, which goes along the whole car. And then the drive shaft drives the rear axle, which outputs the power to the tires and causes the car to go forward. Now that's different from the front wheel drive on the Transit over here, which doesn't have a drive shaft or a rear axle. All it has is the engine and then it has a trans axle, which is actually a unit that is basically a transmission and the rear axle combined into one. And like I said, that's called a trans axle. So ultimately, obviously we like the old cars here on Burnout Show. And so all of the classic cars are like this. For the most part, like Tarpy explained, there is engine, transmission, drive shaft, rear diff, and that's how it, the power is transferred. That's why all these old cars, especially nowadays, are not necessarily great to drive in the snow or don't handle as well. It's because of this older style because that's all they made back then. However, nowadays you're getting much more into all wheel drive and front wheel drive vehicles. So this one here, he obviously just to explain the specs, but this is only driven up front here. So ultimately this is better in the snow a little bit than a rear wheel drive car because you're not fishtailing when you drive around as much and not skidding out as much. And believe it or not, they get slightly better gas mileage in some cases. For the most part, there's not much of a difference. However, as Tarpy explained, the power distribution and how it actually gets to the tires and propels your car is hugely different between these two cars. So yeah, Jay pretty much covered everything about the front wheel drive versus rear wheel drive. So now we're gonna go take a look at my 08 Explorer to demonstrate four wheel drive versus all wheel drive. The main difference that you need to understand between all wheel drive and four wheel drive, and this is a general concept amongst all cars that are either all wheel or four wheel, and that is four wheel, you can shift into four wheel drive or you can shift it out of four wheel drive and keep it in two wheel drive. However, all wheel drive is all of the wheels driving the power on the road all of the time. So there's no way to shift it out of all wheel drive, hence the term all wheel. And so four wheel, once again, you can take it out of four wheel drive. All wheel, you can't take it out of all wheel. It's all the wheels all the time. That's the general gist. However, we'll dive into a little bit of the details on how that actually works and which one is technically better or not. So four wheel drive and all wheel drive cars basically are a combination of rear wheel and front wheel. A four wheel drive and an all wheel drive car will both have a drive shaft and rear axle, but they will also have that trans axle that I was talking about on the front wheel drive cars. So like Jay said, all wheel drive is all the time. So that front trans axle will always be engaged. However, a four wheel drive system is set up slightly different. Four wheel drive cars will have a regular transmission just like rear wheel drive cars. Then the transmission drives the first drive shaft which connects to something called a transfer case. The transfer case is what allows your car to shift into and out of four wheel drive. It basically acts acts like another transmission and is used in substitution of the transaxle on the all-wheel drive car. So like I said, the first drive shaft connects to the input on the transfer case. Then coming out of the transfer case, there are two outputs that connect to two more drive shafts. One gets sent all the way back to the rear axle, just like rear wheel drive cars and just like an all wheel drive car. The other output has a drive shaft that goes towards the front of the car. Similar to the rear axle and rear differential at the back of the car, 
there's going to be a front axle and differential. It's a completely separate unit from the transmission. So a four wheel drive car will have two different axles, one for the front wheels and one for the rear wheels. So that's how a four wheel drive car works. It is a little bit more complicated than an all wheel drive car as it has three drive shafts instead of one and two different axles. If you have any questions about any of the four different drivetrain systems, let me know down in the comments and I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. And hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit the like button and definitely subscribe if you're not because we have a ton of really great content that's both educational and really fun. But let's get back to the differences between four wheel drive and all wheel drive. So generally speaking, which one is better uh, all wheel drive is going to give you more traction all the time. So if you live in a, a northern state or in a snowy area, that traction can be good. But a four wheel drive car, you get versatility where you can choose two wheel or four wheel drive. So personally, I think this is all up to preference. I prefer a four wheel drive car so you can go in and out because a four wheel drive car is going to get a little bit worse gas mileage because it's constantly putting out power to all four tires and that requires just a little bit more power. And he mentioned the gas mileage there. It's key to note that that is technically worse gas mileage when it's in four wheel drive. However, when his Explorer is in two wheel drive, technically that would get better gas mileage as a two wheel drive car than an all wheel drive car. And that goes back to the power distribution he was talking about before, because you are taking the power of the engine engine and distributing it to four tires rather than just two and two is better for gas mileage. So gas mileage wise, technically a four wheel drive vehicle is better because you can put it in two wheel. Um, that being said, they are coming out nowadays with thing with all wheel drive cars that are just as good that aside, Ultimately, there is no huge difference that should alter your way to buy one way or the other. Both all wheel and four wheel drive vehicles are great, especially if you're in the Northern States, especially if you go mudding, something like that. At the end of the day, there's basically no difference. They all have their ups and they all have their downs, uh, but they're just slightly different in the different ways. And it's good to be educated about that. So you know when you're picking your car or when you're driving your car, just what's going on. Yeah, so that's all to explain between all wheel drive, four wheel drive, front wheel drive, and rear wheel drive. Hopefully these cars helped you understand it a little bit more. Maybe in the future, we'll give you some tidbits on how to drive the specific um, types of cars with the different drivetrains and things like that. Um, but that will be in a future Burnout Extra. So that's gonna be all for this Burnout Extra, but before we go, I wanna drive your attention to our website. We just relaunched our website recently, completely redesigned along with our merch store, which now includes a ton more designs and a ton of really cool products. So you can go to www.burnoutshow.com slash store to check out our merch, and we would greatly appreciate it if you did that. And what we mean by merch is cool stuff like this and not a Ford Transit or a Ford Explorer. So go check that out. Once again, that's at burnoutshow.com slash store. So if you found this video helpful and you learned something from it, make sure you hit the like button and definitely subscribe. And let us know down in the comments if you have any other questions about your vehicles that you want us to make a video about and explain. But that's gonna be it for this video. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.